Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this new study that seems to have identified a completely new type of a planet that could potentially be habitable. And in this case, the scientists refer to these types of planets as the Hycean worlds, with a lot of these worlds falling under the category known as the mini-Neptunes. But the most exciting part of this particular study, and in this case the most exciting part of the analysis, is that there seem to be so many of these planets out there with some of them being the most common planets we've discovered. So this is actually a pretty interesting study and a pretty interesting analysis. And so let's start with the idea of what these planets are like and what probably happens on their surfaces. Starting with this right here. As of today, we've confirmed 4,472 exoplanets, with nearly 8,000 other planets being candidates, meaning that they're probably going to get confirmed at some point in the future. And of these thousands of different exoplanets discovered so far, some of them have actually been much easier to find and some of them kind of stand out. And a lot of those very common exoplanets don't seem to exist in the solar system either, so we don't really know much about them. And generally a lot of these exoplanets are divided into the rocky planets, with the hot ones being referred to as the lava worlds, all sorts of different gas giants such as hot Jupiters, but then right here in the middle we have these ocean worlds, ice giants, mini Neptunes and super Earths. And these are the planets that have been really fascinating because there seem to be a lot more of them than a lot of other planets. Way more than gas giants and even more than typical terrestrial planets or rocky worlds. But because these types of planets do not exist in the solar system, the only way for us to figure out what's happening on their surface and inside of these planets is through various hypothetical studies or through various simulations using supercomputers. Nevertheless, they do represent some of the most exciting exoplanets we've discovered so far, with one in particular already showing signs of potential habitability. The exoplanet located about 124 light years away from us, known as K218b, an object that we've discussed on the channel previously, and a planet where the water vapor has already been discovered in the atmosphere, that also happens to be in the habitable zone of the star system and that might potentially represent the prototype for these types of exoplanets, the Hycean planets. Planets that seem to be habitable, but represent something completely different from planet Earth. And that is pretty much the focus of the paper that you can find in the description below. They investigate these planets mathematically, and sort of discover that, first of all, these planets do seem to possess habitable conditions in certain parts of the planet, while also discovering that these unusual planets might be some of the most numerous habitable worlds out there, which actually makes this really exciting. But in order to classify these objects and a lot of these planets as habitable, we of course are relying on the idea behind planet Earth. The assumption here is that the habitability comes from liquid water, so these objects have to possess a way to maintain liquid water for millions and billions of years. Which is of course why objects around Saturn and Jupiter, such as Ganymede, Europa, Titan and so on, have generally been seen as good potential candidates for potential life living somewhere inside those planets. Somewhere underneath the ice caps, inside the liquid ocean. But in this particular case, through analysis, the scientists have also determined that certain mini-Neptunes, or these objects that are generally less massive and usually smaller than Neptune, yet are way bigger and more massive than planet Earth, given just the right properties, will actually contain quite a lot of different ways to maintain liquid water inside the planet, underneath the thick atmosphere. Or in other words, if we were to somehow see through the atmosphere, we would probably find ourselves in a very interesting situation with a very very large liquid ocean and potentially a lot of possibilities for life to form in these oceans. Oceans that would be tens of if not hundreds of times larger than the oceans on planet Earth with the atmosphere being very different from planet Earth as well, probably very rich in hydrogen and certain other elements. Despite of all of this, the best representation of K218b, the prototype for these high CN planets, at the moment makes it look like this. It's essentially an extremely large and very massive ocean world. And here's how it compares to planet Earth. With most of these planets being generally about 1.6 to maybe about 3.9 times larger in size than planet Earth, and the total mass being about 5 to 10 masses of planet Earth as well, so more massive and larger in size. With K218b being exactly 2.6 times larger and about 8.6 times more massive than Earth. But since it's located in the habitable zone of the planet, and since water vapor has already been discovered around this particular planet, this makes this one of the more interesting planets discovered out there. 
But according to the study, definitely not the only such planet, and a lot more have already been discovered and have already been confirmed, suggesting that this could definitely represent a completely new class of habitable planets that we should be exploring in more detail. Although trying to define exactly what the properties of these planets are is still a little bit difficult. So in this paper, the scientists believe that most of them are probably not really super-Earths. They're much bigger than super-Earths, but much smaller than mini-Neptunes. In other words, they represent a completely different class of a planet. With the maximum suggested size for these planets being about 2.6 size of planet Earth, and about 10 masses of Earth. Because after this, they probably turn into mini-Neptunes. At the same time, the temperature on these planets can actually be pretty high, simply because of very high pressures on the surface, and because some of them are a little bit closer to the parent star. The atmospheric temperatures can be up to about 200 degrees Celsius, so technically past the boiling temperature of water. But because of the high pressures on the surface, possibly up to about 1000 bar of pressure, the water can maintain its liquid form, and deeper in the water, the temperature will actually decrease creating very comfortable conditions deeper in the oceans, where life can actually easily evolve. But at the same time, these planets do vary quite a lot. For example, some of these planets will be tidally locked to the star, they will always be facing with the same side. And these dark Hycean worlds, as the scientists refer to them, will actually have very different conditions on the surface, potentially even more habitable than some of the other planets. At the same time, some of them will be farther away from the star and will actually form what's known as the cold Hycean planets. In this case, probably being somewhat similar to Europa, Ganymede and Titan, which overall creates quite a diversity for various habitable conditions, with many, many of these planets already meeting the qualifications for being the Hycean planet. And even though previously we mostly focused on terrestrial habitable zone, or basically looking for planets that are similar to planet Earth that are in the habitable zone of their stars, the main suggestion in the paper is that the Hycean planets represent a much higher chance for us to find alien life somewhere out there, with quite a lot of these planets already fitting into the category. On top of this, because of their size and because of the thickness of their atmosphere, some of the future telescopes, such as the James Webb telescope, will have a perfect opportunity to look for various biosignatures in the atmospheres of these planets. And the scientists in this paper identify several such biomarkers with some of them visible in this graph right here, suggesting that a lot of these planets should really be the focus of future studies, in terms of the search for extraterrestrial life at least. And so any kind of a biosignature or any kind of emission coming from potential life here would be a lot easier to find around a lot of these Hycean planets compared to some of the terrestrial worlds we've found so far. With quite a lot of candidates that have already been found being within about 150 light years away from planet Earth, and because of the atmospheric composition of these planets, they actually maintain their habitability in a lot of different regions around the star. They can actually maintain liquid water even if they're really far from the star, simply because of the pressures created by the hydrogen. Suggesting, of course, that even at really far away distances from the star, they'll still technically be habitable and have liquid oceans, which makes this for a pretty exciting type of planet and will most likely create a lot of exciting opportunities for future studies. But in this case, we are probably going to be looking for very different biosignatures, mostly because it's expected that the life, if it exists here, is not really going to be producing much oxygen or a lot of other similar compounds to planet Earth. The chemical emissions from the life here would be very different, with potential signs of life being things like methyl chloride, dimethyl sulfide, and a lot of other non-oxygen life-based compounds that we normally find in some of the depths of the oceans on planet Earth. And so life here would be obviously extremely different. It would be surviving extremely hot conditions, it would also be living in very highly pressurized conditions, but I guess not so different from some of the regions in the oceans of planet Earth. But in regards to potential extraterrestrial intelligence on these planets, that's a completely different question. Since we don't even understand how intelligence formed on planet Earth, we're probably not going to be finding anything anytime soon. Anyway, we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.